May is National Bladder Cancer Awareness Month. More than 74,000 new cases are diagnosed in the U.S. each year. And joining me now to talk a little bit more about it is Dr. David McConkey with the Greenberg um, Bladder Cancer Institute. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Lisa. I feel like we hear so often about many different types of cancer, but uh, bladder cancer is actually known as the invisible cancer? It's under the radar. Okay, so why? Tell me a little bit about uh, some information about bladder cancer that maybe people aren't aware of. Well, for one thing, it surprises many people to know that it's caused by cigarette smoking. Mm. We could probably prevent about half of bladder cancers by uh, eliminating cigarette smoking. The other thing that people don't know that it's either the fourth or fifth leading cause of cancer. Uh, it's more common in men, about two to three, maybe four times more common in men than women. But women, and especially African-American women, get a more aggressive form of the disease. So there are biological differences between male and female cancers that make a big difference, and the lethality in women tends to be a bit higher. And I was reading about 15,000 people die a year due correct, to it? Correct, correct. That's and, a lot. And the other thing that's surprising to people is that the ones who don't die have lifelong surveillance right now. It's the most expensive cancer to treat across the board. Wow. All right. So for people who maybe aren't familiar with it, can you tell me a couple symptoms that sure. people experience? So the symptoms are a lot like bladder infections. And so it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to get to a diagnosis quickly. Uh, blood in the urine is the number one thing that people go into their doctors for. And typically blood in the urine means something else. Uh, again, it usually means a, a symptom of infection. Um, if there's a follow up and, and the doctor looks in the bladder using a a fiber optic scope, a lot like you use in a colonoscopy, then uh, he or she can see tumors in the bladder, remove them, and that for most people is enough to keep it under control indefinitely. Uh, but if, for other bladder cancers that are muscle invasive, they can progress just about as rapidly as any of the most aggressive cancers that we know. It's nice when we have these awareness months because people really can do a double check at that point. So do you suggest people going regularly to check for something like this? Yes, I would suggest getting more information, mm -hmm. particularly if you're a smoker, um, if you have family history, perhaps bladder cancer, if you've worked with industrial chemicals, even hair chemicals can, oh, okay. can be associated with bladder cancer. Uh, we have a great advocacy network called the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network, bcan.org. Uh, BCAN provides a great source of initial information for people and, and very detailed and up to date. If only we could kick smoking in so many ways, <laughs> it would solve a lot of problems, That's right? That's right. Hard, better, easier said than done. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. We thank really you. appreciate it.